I'll be talking a bit about worldly mapping, of course, obviously, and this, this will be an interesting thing for me to do because it's about strategy, obviously, and capabilities, maybe not so obvious, at Big Corp, and I cannot tell you which company it is. So it will be a bit meta. It will not be meta versic, I hope, but it will be a, a journey with with some plots and some casts and some scripts and some acts and some reviews and learnings and barriers. So uh, let's take this journey together. And I hope we can have a lot of interactivity. I was very inspired by by Tanuka and Prasanna and their session with with a lot of interactivity. So I will I will stop at, at a few places to to ask you to switch on your cameras and, and sound and you know join join the conversation and, and ask Q and A's as as we go, so to speak, because that will make it more more fun and interactive and less of talking heads. So this is basically what it's all about. This this talk. How do you get to something? like this in three half day workshops online. And this is hard. I mean, strategy is hard in general. I've been doing this on and off for the past 20 years in large, small and big organizations. And it's hard face to face because most people are not used to doing strategy and thinking about strategy and, and making strategy happen. And then, you know, doing it online with a, a new model or a new tool with, with Miro and Teams and Zoom and whatnot. So there are a number of obstacles that need to be overcome. So this is an interesting journey and an interesting path. And that's what, what this talk will be about. A bit of a commercial break uh, or a technical timeout, as they say in the US. Yeah, this is me. I have been doing a lot of things over the past 25 years, you know, everything from hacker to, to writer. I wrote this, this book about the art of strategy based on Simon's work and uh, trying to synthesize the, the Sun Tzu and the Boyd and, and the, the work by Simon when it comes to visualizing strategy. And it's, you know, totally free on, on Medium. You just click on the link or if you prefer to, to read physical books, there, there's a paperback and a, a hardback as well as a PDF. And yeah, strategy is something that that is very dear to me and in doing it in big companies like Ericsson, scale-ups like NetAnt, startups like FanFab and a company called Alang Solutions that I'm currently working with. And I won't talk so much about that. I will just mention that we do things on open source programming language systems called Alang and Elixir that are very, very good for, for scalability, reliability, security, low cost high transaction volumes with customers like Ericsson, Cisco, WhatsApp, Klarna. Uh, they all run on, on Erlang and Elixir. But that's a topic for another talk. So I won't bore you with that. So let's get into things. The story about you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. I don't think there were any animals or, or anyone else harmed during these proceedings, but there might have been a few egos that were a bit bruised along the way. The plot. Well, uh, we're looking at a 100 year old, very traditional, very multinational uh, European incumbent with more than 20,000 employees. They had a new strategy in a 70 plus page slide deck. And the mission for this particular part of the organization was to develop the necessary capabilities in order to support, or rather needed to support the company strategy. So this pattern is not uncommon. I've seen it in large, small and medium sized companies, startups, scale ups, screw ups. So, so the pattern is not uncommon. The cost. Well, there was a multinational senior management group. I wouldn't call them a management team, but they were just below the, the C-suite with, with the, the head of, of that group reporting to the company executive group, so a member of, of the C-suite. 
then a very, very skilled and experienced organization coach and facilitator and a good friend called Michael with Crisp that some of you may have heard of. And then and yours truly, a somewhat experienced executive and strategist. So this was the cast. And the script for this performance was set as three half day workshops over a period of one and a half months where we should do obviously wardly mapping in Miro and teams and collaborate and visualize strategy. We had the idea of using homework or field work to get the, the people in this management group to practice doing things in pairs with time set aside for practicing to actually do strategy and not only hear someone else doing it, which is very, very important. I cannot emphasize this enough because it's about teaching, in this case, the members of the team to fish and not doing the fishing for them. And of course, as always, when, when you work with, with senior executives, it's super important to do regular check-ins with your key stakeholders to make sure that they are happy and you keep their trust as you go along. Because even if you do a lot of preparation and scripting, you cannot prepare for everything because the world is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Yeah, so let's do a short Q&A, a mini Q&A here before I start the four acts about, you know, selling the idea, um, doing the, the, the different Miro strategy canvas, worldly mapping, value chain uh, and strategic choices in, in four acts. So this is sort of the prelude to the, to the concert or the performance. So act one. Well, you need to agree on what to do and you need to sell uh, what you're going to do. And in this part, I'm thinking of just showing what, what we did in order to convince ourselves and this particular client, Big Corp, why it would be a good idea to collaborate with us. Basically, by, by explaining this, this new model, the mapping to them and how to connect that with their overall company strategy and what they were set out to do, which was building the suitable capabilities for realizing the strategy. And in this case, the capabilities that they were about to develop was, was related to build, buy and outsource. Because they had realized, I don't know, potentially by influence of one of the old traditional management consultancies, that you, it's not a good idea to build everything yourself. There are things you can buy and there are even things that you can outsource. It's a bit of a mystery how you, how you do this, at least to, to most people. And they outsource this to management consultants like, like McKinsey, who give them some magic met matrices and, and Excel sheets, and things just, just happen by magic. But our idea, was actually to teach this management group how to think uh, and how to get a situational awareness themselves so they can make their own strategic decisions rather than outs outsourcing it to McKinsey. So let's see what we did. Yeah, this was the first slide of a slide deck, a very short one because we wanted to have a conversation but still visualize what, what we were talking about. We were talking about visualizing the business environment, guiding strategic choices, developing capabilities using the model of orderly mapping. And examples are always good, and why is always good. So we try to talk about what, what, what this is, visualize the evolution and guide choices. And understanding what, what customers need, market position, competition today, tomorrow, where is technology going today, tomorrow, where do we focus, what moves and decisions to make, in this case, very interesting, in-house, off-the-shelf, outsource, build, buy, outsource, and then, of course, what capabilities do we have already, what do we need to, 
to to build competence around. Of course, we can also talk about ways of working and organization, as we heard in, in Steve Perkins' excellent talk just before this. So, um, showing them the map, um, not talking so much about the theory, but but more give a concrete example. Uh, and this is something from from Howard Rees from from gaming, and I explicitly picked this because I wanted this particular group to get out of their comfort zone a bit and not talk about their domain of expertise, but still something which is familiar, which people can relate to, which is which is online gaming, where you can relate to, you know, customers, gamers, players, their, their gear, and how that sort of using a value chain goes down all the way to, to power with the different stages of, of evolution of the components and, and explaining that to them. And I'm, of course, going through this very quickly because most of you are very familiar with this this stuff and, and even this particular example. But what I wanted to to explain was was how this was related to the particular challenge at hand for, for this management group because they really need to focus and they need to think about their the expected market changes and of course also what about things that you can do in house. What should you do off the shelf? What should you, should you do? Should you outsource? And that's of course related to if things are more Genesis, custom built products or commodities. So, so this also related to their need of potentially building more capabilities for handling these different, different tasks. I mean, outsourcing, then you need to be very good at procurement. That should be sort of best practice on the evolution axis. Procurement, if, if you're going to uh, buy off the shelf products, maybe best practice is, is not needed. Maybe it's okay with good practice. So, so And then finally, if you're going to develop things, then best practice is, is, is uh, very, very good to be at because that's where you want to spend, spend your time and effort. And content, which is even more novel and innovative is, is another capability. So this was the way we explained how to connect the, the technology components and the, the capabilities for, for handling different technology components in different stages of the evolution. And of course, collaboration, right? It's all about collaboration, doing it together, seeing things together, getting the situation together, uh, situational awareness together as a team, which is not easy with, with uh, uh, strong minded executives that are very competitive and uh, sometimes not only with the external competitions, but also internally. And uh, then I gave some references. I mean, we had a good conversation uh, and, and some references, including this marvelous video by Balam investing in innovation. We ran this on several locations for, for the stakeholders, the key stakeholders and for, for the management group. So I can really recommend this, this uh, short video. I think it's five minutes. So Lam investing in innovation. Yeah, that was act one. Now I'm going to do a mini break again and see if there are more questions around the first act. I mean, selling or getting the trust in order to collaborate on visualizing strategy and capabilities. I'm going to do this window a little bigger and I'm going to see if there are any questions. So I can just find them. Okay. Have a couple of comments. So Christoph. Or maybe Vicky, uh, Vicky, you wanna you wanna join and ask your question or your comment? Hi, Vicky. Hey, Eric. I actually do have a question. So perhaps you're going to cover this in Act Two, but I was wondering what were the things that people pushed back on when you made this introduction? Were there any questions? Were there people who found it it might be too challenging or not might not work or just you know what did people say? Mm -hmm. That's, that's a really good question. I think that there was an element of curiosity among some of the people. I think this, this video by Lam is really, really good. Uh, it's really well made. So that created some, some, you know, positive anticipation. I think the, the pushback, I think people, this was so new to people. So, so there, there wasn't really any pushback at this point in time. I think we sort of 
got them interested and we got them to sort of <laughs> go with the, with the following acts. So, so we, we must have done something right. So I think that, that the pushback and, and the challenges came, came a bit later and not to give everything away. I think the, this, this uh, management consultancy matrices from, 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 I won't mention any names of, of the big five, but I think we, we, we got a bit of a pushback there. I think some of the people in the group had seen those and wanted to get very quickly to, you know, how, can we get into the Excel sheet? Can, can we just act? Can we just, you know, just start doing this is the classic in you know in the in the observe orient side act loop that that you sort of jump from half orient to 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 act without um, observing and, and deciding so so i think there was an element of that because a lot of the senior executives of this world they have gotten to their positions by by acting and doing and, and being very action oriented and that many people are, are not used to reflecting and, and thinking about landscapes and and, and uh, climatic patterns and, and you know they're not used to situational awareness that's something someone else does and, and they get sort of <laughs> actions and, and start doing long a uh, bit rambling answer is that reasonably okay for, uh, not to keep you in suspense too long for act one and act two where we'll cover it more uh, yeah, I, I am looking forward to seeing how things evolve. There's there's one more question from Rick. How well yeah. do you think they really understood what they were buying into at this stage? And how did you mitigate that risk? Mm, that's a good one. To be completely honest, I don't think they knew what they were in for. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they knew that, that uh, we were going to have three workshops, three half-day workshops. And this is tough in, in a live uh, environment and it's even tougher online by this time this was during covid so i think that they had gotten some hang of, of working online but it was pretty clear that they hadn't been working together as a group on strategy very early on so no uh, i don't think they they knew what was coming okay act two strategy 101 uh, miro and the strategy canvas a uh, brilliant Thing by 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 hired thought, great inspiration in the community. Ben Mosher. So the idea was here to to just you know get everyone on the same page. What 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 is strategy really, and the include and the importance of situational awareness that we need to get on the same page and sing from the same uh, hymn sheet. Also, you know, get people to understand Miro because no one had used that before. And then, of course doing this together prepare the wardley map canvas but not going into the wardley map itself you know start with the purpose the scope the users the user needs and the value chain take this step by step not jump straight in and maybe also do some homework so this was the start of a workshop number one with big corp and the why is always good to start with just to get everyone on the same page you know, sustainably thrive in a world where the rate of change will never be slower than today. What is strategy? Because there's a lot of misconceptions around that. I think this is a definition as good as, as any. The art of shaping an environment to gain a desirable outcome. It's not about making 70 page slide decks and, and budgets dressed up as, as Halloween ghosts. I think Rita Ginter McGrath sometimes uh, calls the misconception. So it's about shaping and making decisions about directions. So in summary, secure the situational awareness, make choices of direction, make decisions and actions in direction in that direction and repeat steps one to three regularly. And, you know, Jack Welch has this famous quote about picking a general direction and implement like hell. I'm not sure I fully agree with it, but I think this, this resonates with, with a lot of action-oriented direct uh, senior executives. So, so just to, to sort of make sure that, that I and we as facilitators and, and teachers and, and uh, guides Sherpas, if you will, get this aspect of strategy. I think it was it was important to to include the implementation aspect uh, of, of strategy uh, as well uh, early on. 
then this magic thing about capabilities because this was not only about the technology components as such they, these are of course important but in order to to handle those components depending on the evolution evolution stage this big corp company needed to have the capabilities meaning abilities or capacities to to achieve specific purposes or outcomes that are sort of not processes or services or functions or technologies but more descriptions of of what the business does in terms of abilities in 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 the in the business then going into miro we had a short session where people could practice and, and this was rather smooth but again hands-on doing it teaching hands-on to get into the tool because we had everything all the stuff that i'm showing you here was in miro and just taking it out and anonymized it a bit for your convenience then we used the Wardley Mapping Canvas by Ben Mosher. I can very much recommend uh, using that if you haven't done so already. It gives you a very simple lightweight structure to make sure that you don't jump to conclusions and, and take things in, in the right order. And um, also helps you decide what parts to, to focus on because if you're a big corp like big corp it's easy to get bogged down in all kinds of details and you need to decide okay what what value chain should we start with because there's maybe 10 to choose from and and it's important to both see the big picture and then narrow down the scope to to really do one of those value chains and turn that into a worldly map and then make the strategic decisions and do that together in order for for the individuals in this management group to be able to to do that by themselves or together in pairs for their own particular favorite value chains later on okay yeah so this looks trivial but i can assure you it's not this took uh, half a day of struggles because it was easy to get derailed into all kinds of, of detailed discussions and uh, a lot of people that are used to, to talking and not used to collaborating. So it, it took a lot of facilitation skills and was very happy to have Michael Giotta on board because he's one of the best facilitators in organizational coaches around. So ultimately we, we managed to get to a, a value change that was reasonably detailed to be to be valuable but not too detailed so we could feel that we got progress through the steps of you know looking at the purpose looking at the scope narrowing down the scope looking at the users and user needs and there was so much energy in the room maybe 80 percent was was positive but, but uh, 20 percent was was why can't we just go to the matrix and and do the capabilities right away so so we really had to to sort of hold those horses so as to not jump straight into action before doing the sort of analysis and, and getting to the, the the common understanding of the situation and the situational awareness yes i think i stop there again to to open up for for questions or comments or reflections and i'm gonna see if i can see the q a here someone who who has a question please click on the top right corner and turn on your camera and mic there must be questions on on what happened but i am hoping to to hear your questions yes there is a, chris chris please there is a question by tim manning in the q a session and ah. tim, tim says that you said there was an existing 70 page strategy document but with the workshop you you have taken them like from the to the beginning or from mm. from the beginning and the question is what triggered this situation mm. and who produced the original strategy and perhaps i could extend it how this original strategy contributed to to this mapping session hmm? no but that's a, that's a really good uh, question tim uh, and 
in big corporations like big corp there's there's sometimes the, the c-suite the senior the top management they have produced this 70 page slide deck um, maybe themselves but most often it has been produced by 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 management consultants and of course then the question is how how do the rest of the organization realize this 70 page slide deck so there were some directions i mean if you read this carefully which which people had done you could find out some direction but the task was really to to take this this rather high level strategy and with with certain directions on we should focus on on these these markets these customer segments these certain growth targets and how to make that relevant for for this particular part of the organization what what capabilities do they need to build and what kind of technologies do they need to, to build in order to realize the overall company strategy. So they had a, a pretty big legacy system. I can't go into details, unfortunately, <laughs> unless you, you find me for a beer in, in Stockholm or elsewhere, then, then I may, might be able to share a few more details. But, but to answer your question, th this often happens in big organizations. The top uh, management has a large or small slide deck, and then the other, the, the, the parts of the organization should realize that through technology, uh, and the technology can be built or, or bought or outsourced. And in this case, the, 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 the questions to be answered were, okay, what should be how are the technology components moving? And given that, what, what uh, technology components should we outsource? What, which should we build ourselves? And which should we buy? That was the second question. And the third question would be, okay, do we have these capabilities to build this new technology? Or do we need to learn and teach, or sorry, uh, learn and how do, uh, or, and do, do we have the, the, the capability to, to buy technology, or do we have the capability in terms of procurement, for instance, to buy or outsource? So, so it was about several choices when it comes to technology, but then also what capabilities to build. Is that a reasonable answer to your question, Tim? <laughs> Otherwise I have to buy you a beer or a coffee and, and take it offline at, at the time of your convenience. So. Act three, preparing the worldly map, finally. Apologies, there is one more question. By sure. sure. Tell us about your key internal champion or champions for this effort. How did you ensure they were fully engaged and how did you leverage them to shepherd those leaders, these leaders to commit to this process? Yeah, that's a good one. We had two people in this management group who were sort of the key stakeholders and they were the, the people who we tried to keep happy and, and to keep the trust. And that was also a bit interesting because they were the most action oriented. <laughs> so so the, the, sometimes they wanted to jump ahead. So this was really, really tricky to, to sort of get them to hold their horses and follow along with, with, the, with the steps for, for the rest of the group to, to, to get to a common understanding because they had done some homework and, and gotten into their own little little matrix or, or tech stack that they saw as the solution. And what, what myself and my companion were trying to achieve was that everyone should take that journey together and come to a similar conclusion or, or a slightly different conclusion together because this, this was not sustainable because it was like magic. They had sort of the answer already. They thought that, that me and my co-facilitator were pretty sure that they had missed things because they hadn't taken all the perspectives into account. So we wanted to guide the whole group through these steps to get into new insights together because we couldn't prove it, but we were pretty certain that there were important things missing in this solution that sort of existed behind the scenes for, for two of the key stakeholders. It, is that an answer to, to the question? I hope. Yeah, so act three. Finally, we get to prepare a worldly map together. So we, we did a recap of, of capabilities and the value chain. 
that we had prepared in the previous workshop. And then we, we did the map together in, in a, a half day session. And the struggle again was to avoid going into details and actions before we had reached the situational awareness and the strategic choices. Because you can't really go into uh, discussing and deciding what capabilities you need before you have decided what technology components you should you should build yourselves or outsource or buy. So, so that was sort of the, the whatever premature convergence or jumping to conclusions that was was almost happening all the time for, for a few of, of the people. But some of the people in the group were starting to realize that, hey, hmm, we really need to, to take those big questions before we can jump into the details and start filling in the Excel sheets uh, and, and uh, getting to the decisions and, and, and concrete actions. But this is hard with action-oriented senior executives. So this was the homework that, that they did. And I think this was very, very important that together with the stakeholders, we arranged so that they got time in their calendars to, to spend a few hours a week. I think it was Monday mornings where they could actually do the value chain and, and do it for their domain. So, so they could interact with the model and play around with it. I think this was crucial for, for the progress. So I encourage you to, to let people do first under the guidance of, of people who, who, who can teach, but then also on their own or in pairs or in small groups so that they really get the hang of the beauty and power of, of worldly mapping. And in this case, starting with the, with the value chain before going into the, to the evolution stages. And this is of course, very much inspired by by the teachings of Ben Mosher and, and from, from his excellent site and then his, his worldly mapping canvas. Then we did the map and it was, it was still a struggle. It took a lot of time. I mean, we, we had done the homework with, with the value chain. So, so that made it easier to start discussing where to place the different technology components on the evolutionary axis. And I think this having the, the, the template with the descriptions, rather detailed descriptions on what, what Genesis custom built product and commodity really means avoided a lot of unnecessary discussions about, yeah, is this custom built or is this product? Well, look at the definition, then it's easier to, to get an agreement or a common understanding. But of course we want the debate. We want to, to hear different perspectives and, and move things around in real time. On, on the mirror board in this case. So, so this is very fun on a whiteboard. It's very fun on a mirror, but it's slightly more, more difficult, but it, it worked surprisingly well, I must say. And key again, that we had chosen one specific value chain to work on, to get that down to the, to the, to the details and get sort of a common picture of that. That was crucially important for us. Yeah, I'm gonna open up for mini Q and A again. Steve asks, how many people were in the group? Actually, Steve, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Good question. It was between eight and 12. That's, uh, I think we had, we had a few people who were not in there all the time, unfortunately, which was a bit, a bit sad to be completely honest, around eight to 10, which, which is not too big, but, it, but it's still rather yeah. big when you're, when you're working online in a physical setting, I, I would say that's, that's pretty manageable. But online, it, it, it was quite, quite a big group, to be completely honest. Mm, yeah, yeah, I can imagine, especially if they're strong men at uh, execs. How did you gain some consensus with them, the group? Yeah, that's, that's a good, good question. I think that's where, where the worldly mapping really shines, because you can move things around and you can debate around the placement of sticky notes, in this case, virtual sticky notes in the mirror setting. So it's not the personal debate, me versus you, you're right, I'm right, you're wrong. So, so I think that that was surprisingly easy compared to, to many other similar sessions that, that I've been in and facilitated over the years. So, so I think that the, 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 having the discussions around objects, virtual objects in this case really helps. And I think we had prepared them by doing the homework and also explaining the model 
and, and having also the definitions of, again, having the definitions of the different stages of the, of the evolutionary axis was very helpful. Have them on, on the mirror board. That helped a lot to, to get consensus. It's a good idea. Much, yeah. much quicker. Um, Rick, Rick actually um, uh, had the, the same thought. So I'm just going to read out his, his question. Uh, what type of aha moments did they express uh, at this point in the process? Yeah, I think in this part, I think they started to realize that that they shouldn't or couldn't jump into into the, the, the sort of capabilities they needed before they had, had decided on on the technology, what, what technologies to, to have to build by or outsource. I think some people started to realize that, okay, it's good to see the big picture together. They were even bringing up their own examples where they had similar things to worldly maps or value chains that, that they thought were sort of useful and that they had seen before. And so the aha moment was when they could see the whole worldly map for this specific business to consumer service that they were all reasonably familiar with then then that was a, a bit of an aha moment uh, but i think the big aha moment came in the next act so and no spoilers so it's time for act four thanks thank you and there is one more question from vian sure what will, what will be the approach to detail or summarize a capability on the map Say again, please. I, I missed part. What will be the approach to detail or summarize a capability on the map? Mm, yeah, this is Act 4. So let's jump into Act 4. Oh, okay. Good question. You're, you're ahead. So, yeah, the, the third workshop or Act 4 in, in this story. Again, repeating what, what we mean by capabilities, the, the importance of, of a common understanding, the situational awareness, and the worldly mapping, the model itself, but then also highlight that the, the decisions on what to build, buy, or outsource are really the strategic choices. The, those are the decisions, the strategic decisions that, that should be made based on the map, not based on a magic matrix outsourced to a management consultancy. And again, avoid going into those matrix matrices before you have achieved situational awareness and made your strategic choices. So here, having the 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 worldly map, we could start color coding uh, and getting to to uh, agreement reasonably quick on what parts were were good choices or the right choices for for developing in-house to buy and to outsource. So taking it step by step, getting getting people to sleep on a few things, look at the maps, because there were time between the workshops and they had time to, to discuss in those Monday morning sessions before we reconvened. So I think that was, was important to, to do in this stepwise manner. And then coming back to the question just asked, then we could look at the capability needed by this part of the organization for a selected technology component. Let's say you have decided that this technology component you want to develop in-house. Then we had the, the axis here with, I don't know if you see my pointer, but on the evolution axis, we, we talked about few people in the world having this capability few people in Big Corp having this capability, some people in our part of Big Corp have this capability, or everyone who needs it in our part of Big Corp have this capability. And then the capabilities were different depending on if you were developing the component in-house, if you were buying it, or if you were outsourcing it. Uh, if you outsource, you need to be able to evaluate vendors, for instance. If you want to develop something in-house, you need to be able to do architecture, you need to be able to deliver, you need to be able to run, and so on and so forth. So, so these are the, the stickies that we are placing out on the map. And unfortunately, I cannot show you the details because, because this, this is sort of strategically valuable for big corp. But then I also show you this, this matrix that, that they had prepared already in advance with, with a few examples of, of capabilities 
for for a different build buy or outsource activities so open up for q a again so recently i was exploring time to information because i think that's essential in companies these days how fast can they get information and i was looking at a similar line uh, as you uh, have here on ev the evolution, that is few people will have it more, few people have it in the world, so on. Some have it in the organization, so on. And mine was inspired by a blog post on Kniffin, where you sort of flattened the, the Kniffin line. And I used it as the visibility axis, so not, not the evolution. So I just wanted to, to explore because actually when I read this, evolution from from right to left i guess it could be uh, easily interpreted as how many how visible is this in the organization but just wanted to to chat with you that where do we actually put this is the evolution axis the the right place i know you did this in your example and i did it in mine and it probably made sense in both but it could be something to explore yeah, I think you're onto something important here, and I, I forgot to mention this. I mean, there's a whole field, a subfield of worldly mapping called capability mapping by 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 Chris. What's his name? I'm terrible with names. Help me out. Mark Burgauer and uh, Chris McDermott and mm -hmm. Mac, 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 McMahon. And I know there's been some debate in the community on the, on what to put, what labels to put on 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 the evolution axis, and this is basically me and Mika Liotta trying to to explain something to 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 make it familiar to to big corp to to avoid getting too much into various modeling issues and, and potentially theoretical issues so, so trying to make it as concrete as possible that was our simple argument for for using these labels mm. But I'm happy to explore because yeah, I think you're onto something important and, and maybe we can have a, a separate session and maybe potentially yeah. even include the, the capability mapping uh, team. Mm -hmm. And I just remembered while we were talking that actually I put uh, a link to that blog post on the community uh, um, forum, the Wortley Mapping community. So I'll drop that in, in the chat and you, you, I think we can at least uh, use that as a starting point. Mm. Yeah, and I think in hindsight, I'm not sure we completely did the right thing. Maybe we should have gone capability mapping all along, but we wanted to make a distinction between the technology components and sort of the capabilities for handling the components. Mm -hmm. So so I'm not sure if I would do the same if I were to do this again. Okay. That's it for me. Thanks. But thank you. Great, great reflection, great question, and that's something to explore. Let's move on. So it's time for the reviews. So what did the participants say? Well, you can read yourself or I can, I can pick some highlights. Well, complex, it was clear that it needed a deeper understanding of, of, of Big Corp's current situation. So they, they, they realized that they needed to do, do some work actually. And uh, they realized the importance of having a common framework, a common language to set the scene and guide the discussion because they had been in endless discussions before it turned out around strategy and other things so now they had some some guard rate to hold on to also they thought the model to be thought provoking because they realized that they were jumping into details too quickly and without agreeing on what were the key questions to answer and of course, seeing the bigger picture. And these are not sort of my words. This, this is actually the words of, of the group themselves. So, so this is from, from a, a feedback session that we did. And then of course, how to progress the critical areas and you know, list the big questions and also, also those and getting, getting to think together by the help of a, of a simple model and also getting insights and advice on how to tackle the future. So in the end, I think we, we were good. There were a lot of struggles along the way, and we could even get to those uh, magic matrices for this particular business to consumer case. And it is to be continued. It's not ended yet. And I'm going to share some learnings from, from my, my and Michael's perspective. So COVID-19, you know, 100% remote in Teams and Miro. Very important to 
teach how to use Miro because that's a powerful tool, but you need to practice it in order to, 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 to use it. So we spent some time on that and I think that was good. Teams, I'm not going to talk more about that. I hate it. Uh, then I think preparing scripts. I mean, normally you prepare scripts if you're going to facilitate. If you're doing it online, you need even more detailed scripts. And especially if you're working with, with senior execs that are used to taking a lot of space and talk a lot. But of course, we also need to be, need to be ready to, to improvise. But what I mean by a script is like step by step, this, this amount of time, because otherwise you will be derailed big time. And I'm also, I've also been one of those <laughs> execs that have derailed the workshops. So I can see it from both ways. Context, 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 context. I mean, in, in this um, uh, management group, there were differences across countries, services, and technologies. So it was crucial to practice wordly mapping so that each and every one could do it by themselves so they can prepare their own maps after the, 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 the fish coaches had, had left the building and again um, avoid getting into detailed actions too early see the landscape together first then to really see the context together and then practice 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 doing strategy as much as possible and securing this calendar time monday mornings to to do some homework and field work read watch prepare was also very, very important. Not having everything in one big chunk, slicing it a bit, and having time to think, work in advance of, of the workshops. And then spending even less time on explaining theory or the model, uh, even more time doing it together. And I, I was in this, I don't know if you've tried this uh, can art part, it's canvas and wine. You, you get to, to do acrylic painting like in two hours, from, from basically nothing into a Van Gogh painting with a, with a skilled art teacher. So if you can do that in two hours, of course, you can, you can do worldly mapping, uh, maybe not in two hours, but it's, a, it's in the doing of it that, that you really get a hang of it. So I think we conclude there and time's up. I will skip this. This is more barriers to be aware of in strategy creation and obstacles don't block the path. They are the path. And I think we had the Q&A already and time is up. Enjoy the rest of the conference and enjoy the fantastic worldly mapping community. Thank you.